Hi, I'm John from WorkshopAddict.com. Today I have a follow-up review on the Craig K5 pocket hole jig. Um, I've been using this for about a year now, and when this came out, I had been using my K4 jig for two, three years, I think. So I was very familiar with that jig, and when they came out with the K5, they made some changes, and most of them I really liked. Some of them I was a little hesitant on, and one of them I was just way off on. So I wanted to tell you about this unit after using it for a year and using it quite a bit. I built several cabinets, I built a computer desk system with upper and lower cabinets, a great big tall storage cabinet unit, um, rolling mobile bases for my tools. Wherever I can use a pocket hole I will because they're fun, they're easy, they're quick. Um, now the K4 was a solid performer but it really seriously had a few minor tweaks that needed to be done. One of the major changes they did was they moved the handle to the front on this, the clamping handle from the back. And on the K4 it made sense for me because you clamp it on the back and this way you could clamp your unit to um, a desk, a surface, a workbench. The problem was was the adjustment on that back um, piston back here was so tedious and so if you were going from three quarter inch to half inch you know it was it was a pain it was annoying. Um, once I mount this to a board I clamp the board to a to a workbench and it's perfect so I don't miss that at all and quite frankly I like mounting this to a board because I just put a couple holes in the back of it hang it on the wall and whenever I need it I grab it and go and everything's together. This is such a convenient and easy tool to use. Now where I said I was wrong in this piston in the back before you had to use to um, actually adjust the nut to bring the piston back and out and forth and it took a long time and when I originally looked at this unit I thought that you had to kind of guess where this was and, and try to clamp it down and it took a while and I was like eh, they talk about automatic and it really wasn't well actually I had been doing it wrong this on the top of this piston here there's a gray basically button that you push in and when you push that in you can move it in and out so what you want to do is put your wood in push the button down push it against the wood. Once it's against the wood, you can start pulling your handle down when you feel resistance, push on that, let it click once, push it, let it quick, click twice. After it clicks twice, it's adjusted. That simple, that quick, really, really easy. Um, I feel a little foolish for having that wrong in the first time and it was quickly pointed out and ever since I've just been, well, that concern is gone. Um, another improvement they did was they marked the depth of um, the depth of the wood that you're cutting, which is marked on here, if you like three quarter inch wood, you want to set it for three quarter inch depth, and you're all set. Um, I had some comments done on the last video that said it looks like it's cheap plastic and it's brittle. This main unit right here is very, 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 very solid. I don't have any concerns of this ever breaking. Now, these side wings are made of a different, this um, outfeed wings are made of a different plastic. They are, sounds a little more brittle, they're hard, like a hard brittle plastic. Now, for use for putting boards on it, I don't have any fears. I'm not going to break it. The only thing that I have a concern about is these tabs for opening them up. You know, it feels like someday if I get in a hurry, I could snap that tab off. Minor concern, but um, the storage unit is really nice for your drill bit, your driver, and whatever else you need. Now, for setting the depth, the length of the screws that you're using, um, this is a big change from the K4 unit. and Probably the only one I don't like. The K4 unit used to have an area where you could sit your drill bit into the body and adjust your collar. And, you know, set it up for how many inches and you set it and you go, piece of cake, I love that. It was easy. This, it's not so much difficult as it's just another part that has to get put into place. And like right now where it's set, I have to move my piston back here in order to get that into place. So it's a little inconvenient, not that big of a deal. I thought I was going to have an issue with maybe losing this thing, but basically if you put it right back into where you got it from, it's not going anywhere. Um, I got to say this is, if you're looking at a pocket hole kit, don't mess around buying a junior kit. Don't mess around buying an off-brand kit, off kit. Everybody I've ever talked to that's done that has just regretted it, and once they've tried one of these, they want one of these. Um, I really, really have done a lot of big work with it too. As a matter of fact, when I just did my stand-up um, tool chest, a storage area, I was putting 75-inch boards that was close to 48 inches wide. Or so you're 
75 inches long by 48 inches wide and I was putting pocket holes on this base with a 5 8 inch OSB board. So I had to even have a little bit of help holding it sometimes because that was heavy when it hangs off to the side but this unit, once it's clamped, it's clamped. I had the board tipping out like this that I had to put my foot on it but this unit handled some monster wood at it. Probably something you typically wouldn't do with pocket holes but um, very solid performer. Um, one year into the use and I really like it and it's funny how after a year you forget about the things you didn't care for in the K4. Now I'm not saying if you've got a K4 drop it, run out the door and buy a K5, but if you're looking for one, um, the K5 is just a very, very convenient, solid performer. So um, until next time, I'm John from WorkshopAddict.com. Talk to you later.